even though I was at my skinniest mm -hmm. and my most toned, and you would think that I, at that moment, I would have looked in the mirror and like loved everything I saw, I still thought I was fat. Mm -hmm. So this whole body image thing, it's totally not even a physical thing. It is totally a mental thing. Welcome to the Sheroic Podcast. This is where you discover what it takes to create success, happiness, and the best version of you. Hey guys, welcome to the Sheroic Podcast. I'm Cassie. And I'm Lisa. And today we're talking about body image. Yes, we are. Yeah, such a big thing, I think, for most women in this world, right? Um, I think every woman struggles with it. Yeah. And if they don't, very good for them because I think we're all trying to reach a place of balance mm -hmm. where we can look in the mirror and love every single thing that we see and we don't circle the flaws yeah. every time we look. Yeah. It's a tough one. I mean, so let's go back. Just um, when did you release that video, um, The Perfect Body, that you made? You know, it's uh, a little bit over two years wow. now when I released that video. So that video, if you guys, if you haven't seen it, you definitely need to check it out. It's at like almost like 11 million views something or something like crazy that. like that. It's my most viral video. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. So that is specifically about, right, the perfect body and what people envision as being the perfect body. Um, what made you start that? Like, You know, I believe that some of the coolest things that you end up doing in life and the most powerful experiences that you have come from not so great things um, because you learn how to pick yourself up and you learn how to get stronger. So around that time, I was getting a lot of hate comments mm -hmm. online about my body and that always makes me so upset because for me, I'm not trying to be a model or a fitness model where my entire career is based on how I look. I'm a teacher, I'm an instructor. And so people start saying, oh, why, why are you an instructor, but you don't have a six pack? And yeah, I actually big, have quotes that here that I want to read to yeah, you. Yeah, uh, you can read them. <laughs> so are these the quotes, and uh -huh. fact, is these mm -hmm. the quotes that kind of set you off into mm -hmm. doing the video in the first mm -hmm. place? All right, mm -hmm. so it says, you shouldn't give advice when you're so fat. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another one says, why do all trainers have a six pack, but not you? Yep. And then another one, take your career seriously and lose some weight. Yeah. Those were real comments pulled from the comments section. Yeah. And for me, I mean, I've been called fat before when I was younger, but to attack my career mm. and tell me that I'm not taking it seriously because I'm quote unquote fat, you know, whatever that means to whoever's saying that, that stings the most. Because how can you judge how much I care about what I do and how I'm influencing other people, helping them reach their potential simply based on my physical appearance? I think it's not cool. And mm. the feelings that I had through all of this, which, yes, I definitely like lay down in fetal position and cried for a little bit because it really, really hurts. Yeah. Um, I took that negative energy and created something to help me express how I was feeling. And that's how The Perfect Body, the video came about. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, when I saw that video, so I actually didn't even know that you were making it. You know, I think you're so busy, I'm so busy. So when I saw it, like, I literally got the chills and I watched it the other day, basically in preparation to talk about it, uh -huh. um, this episode, and I got the chills again. Like, all the hairs on my arms stood up. That last shot with you where you're just looking at the mirror and you've got that like smile on your face and that uh -huh. smile slowly turns to like sadness. What was that like? I mean, what was... You know, um, the first time I watched the first cut of this yeah. video, I actually cried because I felt the same way I did after reading those comments that you just read. And I just felt like this is a moment that everyone needs to think about. Like, are you living for somebody else to make them happy? Or are you living for yourself? And for those of you who haven't seen the video, um, I'll quickly describe it, yeah, but everyone you should go yeah, watch it, youtube.com slash blogilates. Basically, um, I'm running in to my room and I see myself in the mirror. I start pinching my fat and like, as most of us do, like not feeling confident about myself. And then I open up my phone and I start seeing these comments roll in, attacking how I look. And then I actually just Photoshop myself 
in real life to look like what the comments want me to look like. So I have bigger boobs now. I have a smaller waist. I have a bigger booty. And then at first you see me looking happy about it. Like, oh, look, I changed. Like, this is great. But then I start realizing, who am I changing for? And once I realize that sadness starts to kick in and I realize, you know, you need to live for yourself, not for anyone else. So that moment um, when I look in the mirror and you see that smile turn into sadness. We did that quite a few times um, when we were shooting it to get the right emotion. But I really think it, uh, I hope I acted that well because <laughs> I mean, I'm not se- a great actress. But seriously, like it, it didn't feel like acting to me when mm. I saw it, right? Mm-hmm. And it's because those comments were real. It's yeah. because it is a reflection of what you really do go through in your life, right? And for everybody listening, you don't have to be a big YouTube star to understand what that feels like, right? Um, I'm sure a lot of people, myself included, have been teased, have had negative thoughts thrown Mm -hmm. at me. And, um, you know, for you, obviously, it's extremely, it's magnified because it's on such a public scale. It's so many people. um, But everybody knows that feeling where you're Mm -hmm. getting that, like, criticism that isn't really worthy of criticism. And so, yeah, like, I think everyone's experienced that. And the weird thing is usually this type of criticism, in my experience, have come from other women, like Mm -hmm. including, um, for example, like my mom or even family and relatives who are women who feel like I think, I, I don't know, I think when you go to Asian family parties, they're always like, oh, you're getting a little chubby today or you're a little bit fatter Mm -hmm. than usual. Then they try to feed you a bunch of food. It's really weird. What do you Uh, think that's about? (sighs) I don't know. I think. It's just they're very blunt. And if you talk to other people who grew up going to Asian family parties, like it's a very typical thing where your aunt will just be like, oh, you're looking a little fat. Like it's just sort of is. But it really, really hurts. And then you start to realize this thing uh, called being fat and vanity and being skinny at such a young age when you really shouldn't even be thinking about that. You should be thinking about your hobbies and the things that you love doing. But instead, the first time I got called fat straight to my face was at an Asian family party, but by a little kid. And at that moment, and I think I was like, I don't know, eight, 10 or something like that. That is the very moment when I realized, oh my gosh, there is something wrong with me. Mm. And that's thought and that moment still lingers within me and I think that's partially the reason why I am in the fitness industry um, because I'm trying to make myself better and stronger but those moments never really leave you and they kind of shape you yeah Yeah. and it doesn't necessarily get easier right Um, as you get older so like as a kid and other kids are calling you fat Mm -hmm. um, I remember like I used to have a full um, set of braces Uh with the elastic bands and the head brace oh my gosh oh it was full (laughs) on and kids were mean, right? What did they say? So I was about 13, uh-huh. um, and there were younger kids, where, and they didn't even mean to. It's like you'd walk in the room, it's like, what's she got in her mouth? Yeah. Right? It's like they don't mean to because they're so naive, and so that, even as a kid, it stings. But then yeah. as you get older, and the Greeks are exactly the same, by the way, mm. on gatherings, mm-hmm. they'll call you fat to your face, and then they'll feed you. Yeah, and it's the weirdest thing. It is the weird. And if you don't eat, it's offensive. Yes. It's weird. Or I've had this where I've been too lean or too skinny. And Uh it's like, you can't have children if you're that skinny. You need to eat. So it's almost like it doesn't matter what your physique's like. It's a mentality where other people almost try to put you down. And I don't know if they do it deliberately. um, But it clearly happens in multiple cultures. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely a cultural thing Mm -hmm. to be blunt. uh, From my experience growing up as a Chinese Vietnamese American. But when it comes to saying these things online behind a screen name, I think it's just plain rude because right. they don't know who you are. And it's never happened to me on the street. No one's ever come up to me and been like, wow, you're really fat. Like, who says that? Right. Like, what What does that do? But it empowers the person behind the screen when they feel like they're dragging you down. And I, I don't know why that is or why there's a need to say that, um, but people do it all the time online because they feel protected behind mm-hmm. a screen. Okay, so whether it's someone you know, it's a family member, it's a young kid, it's someone on social, um, doesn't matter what the situation, if you're in put in that situation, what do you do? Like, What advice would you give to people that young girls who are going through that now, right? Because 
ideally we can help the people who are given that negativity right mm -hmm. we can help change that mm -hmm. but for now let's just pretend we can't mm -hmm. so those people out there who are getting you know that whether it's social feedback or from their parents what, what advice would you give them well this is what i did when that little girl called me fat mm. i straight up started bawling and I locked myself in the bathroom of this uh, random family's house so I clearly did not take it well mm -hmm. um, but eventually later on in life as you can see I'm now a fitness instructor and what I like to do with negative experiences is learn how to use that to make me become a stronger person because anytime life throws one of those sucky experiences at you you got to turn it in your favor you can either cry and say i'm terrible i'm fat i'm just gonna keep ruining myself or you can be like okay um wh what can i do to make myself better and i think over the course of all these years since mm -hmm. that experience i've um i've gotten into fitness i've learned more about how to eat right for my body and i learned how to educate myself so that i could feel better and that includes health-wise, uh, mental-wise, but also your emotional well-being, too, and your confidence. Yeah. Yeah. But that's – how long did that take you to get there? Because for me, when I was going through it, so I had the frizzy hair as mm -hmm. well and the unibrow yeah. and, um, and, like, the big nose. I got teased for my nose a lot. What? And so at, in those moments, right, when I'm 13, 14, 15, mm -hmm. and people are criticizing me, you know, and I think it's just – it's not meant as like real like emotional distress like mm -hmm. it's kind of harmless but to the person receiving it it's not harmless at all so yeah. as a kid i literally was telling myself i need to get rid of these braces uh -huh. i need to get a nose job my boobs are too small like uh -huh. i was telling myself i i just assumed they were right right i yeah. didn't even consider right like ignore them do better be better let me focus on fitness it i didn't think like that back then no you're right because looking back now it's easy to say right. like remove yourself from negative people and the situation but as a kid that is your world right. you know so when you're in sixth grade and the most popular girl in school is calling you fat and making fun of your last name and how hairy your legs are all you want to do is make it go away because it's so torturous and then you do feel like you mm. need to change because you don't want to be made fun of anymore right. um so how do you stop that well like let's say one yeah. a 13 year old 14 year old, 15 year old well, it doesn't matter your age right people out there who are very susceptible to that type of negativity for you your fight back was the video mm -hmm. right that was your way of saying i'm not going to stand for this anymore i'm going to put myself out there look this isn't right but you had to get to that stage yeah, and right. that was a long journey. But if I, when I was 13 or yeah. so, I was uh, lucky that we ended up switching schools, not because of that, but because we moved and I found a new group of friends who did love me for who I was. And if possible, if any of you guys are going through that right now, try to change your group of friends. Mm. Find people who don't judge you for how you look, but for who you are and how much love and positivity you can add into their lives and theirs into yours but i also know that it's tricky with social stuff it's just hard and weird and when you're young everything means so much more than it really does and and you just got to try your best to remove yourself from those situations yeah. and i think that even applies to right adulthood yeah for it's sure when you're, if you're as an adult in a relationship mm -hmm. which you know i think we've all heard stories or been through it ourselves where your other half is putting you down giving you negative feedback um not being very kind to you um remove yourself from that situation right it doesn't matter how much you feel like you may be in love with somebody mm -hmm. or you've been friends with somebody for 20 years and but oh we've got so much history together i think that is absolutely spot on what you said is remove yourself from that immediately you have to yeah you have to because if someone is making you feel bad about yourself even if you've been friends for a really long time maybe from here on out they're not really on your side anymore mm -hmm. and people do change over time and sometimes friendships are what they are to get you to the next step in life mm -hmm. whatever that may mean I mean, it's happened for me multiple times, and I'm sure for you too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you've been, I think we both have been through um, almost uh, transitions of our physique 
Mm -hmm. um and so yeah talk talk to me a bit about that so yeah. you competed at one point right yes i competed in a bikini competition at one point and even though i was at my skinniest mm -hmm. and my most toned and you would think that i at that moment i would have looked in the mirror and like loved everything i saw i still thought i was fat mm -hmm. so this whole body image thing it's totally not even a physical thing it is totally a mental thing i think in order to have a positive body image, you have to learn to love your body and what it can do for you. You have to view your legs and your butt as things that help you get through life instead of things that don't look as good because who cares what it looks like? At least you have legs. Um, and you know, I didn't think that way when I was younger. I just wanted to look a certain way and do whatever it took to look a certain way. And so I was working out four hours a day, eating about 1,000 to 1,100 calories a day, totally unhealthy. Um, and even though, like I said, I, I, people would have thought that I looked the best, I felt my worst. And my cognitive function, I felt like wasn't even really there. I felt like all I was worried about was my vanity so that I had no energy left to run my business um, and do the things that I'm doing right now today that I love so much. And I feel so much more fulfilled with life and business and relationships, even though I'm like, I don't know, 15, 20 pounds heavier, like whatever. I feel more balanced now. Right. Yeah. So for you, it's almost like even the leaner you were getting yeah. because your mind was almost getting even more unhealthy. Yeah. It was like you were seeing yourself in a worse way. Totally. Yeah. Even though I physically was smaller, I did not like what I saw in the mirror. Yeah. And I just kept wanting to do anything it took pretty much. But I mean, I wasn't taking pills or anything mm. crazy like that um, to lose my lower belly fat, to make my six pack show more, to make my butt more plump. I mean, it's so vain that that is what I really cared about back then. And that's why I was in the gym for so long a day. Like it just, it didn't allow me to be the normal Cassie. I wasn't mm -hmm. happy. I was angry all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's not worth it. Yeah. For me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So you almost have like even heavier now. You have a better body image than you did back then when your physique was quote unquote like leaner or yeah. better or nicer, you know. Yeah. I mean, I look in the mirror and of course, as a normal human being and a woman, I see things that I'd like to make stronger. Right. I'd like to make better. True. But I'm not 100% going to put myself down because, oh, my lower belly is a little flabby today. Like, whatever you know yeah. like if there's a photo shoot coming up okay i'm gonna diet down for it do what i need to do work out a little harder but i'm not gonna pretend like my whole life is one big photo shoot and deprive myself of the happy things i like to do in life just for my body now that's me and being a model is not my career mm -hmm. um and i i'm not a model but for people who are maybe that is their career and for them maybe that uh, that type of discipline for vanity matters in terms of the paycheck and stuff right. like that. Um, but for most of us, I think what's the most important is being able to look in the mirror and really appreciate what we can see. But that also doesn't mean to be stagnant. It doesn't mean right. to say, oh, body positivity, cool, I'm not gonna do anything. Right. I think we should always be working to make ourselves stronger. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I think the body is absolutely a reflection of the mind. Mm -hmm. um, being at Quest, obviously Quest bars mm -hmm. um, are very powerful in helping people lose weight, um, diabetics. I mean, it's it's incredible the different, um, I guess, categories of people who have come out and said, like, your bars have really helped us, yeah. um, which is amazing. The problem is, is I have people in my family who are still overweight, yeah. seriously overweight. Mm -hmm. And so I look at these people and I say I, I've offered them catering free meals mm -hmm. free quest product you know yeah. whatever it's like what do you need but the mind isn't right yeah so because the mind is super unhealthy their body image is completely like out of whack right they can't sure. they can't comprehend or they can't really um ever love themselves yeah. whether you're big small like it doesn't matter right like the only reason why i ended up you know reaching out to my family saying like i'll help you is because i could see they were so unhappy it's yeah. not like it made a difference to me right but they were profoundly unhappy and so it but it didn't matter how much you could offer to help them the mind is unhealthy so I think, yes, you're right. You have to work on the mind to mm -hmm. then understand what you want to do with your body. 
Because I actually think if someone's overweight and they're sincerely okay with it, they're sincerely okay, mm-hmm. they're like, you know what, I'm not, I would rather live less, I'd rather cut off years of my life mm-hmm. to be able to eat a piece of cake every single day. Mm-hmm. I respect that. Because that's what they want. And they chose. And they chose yes. that. Uh-huh. So I think body image to me is about what are you happy with? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you satisfied with? Have you analyzed the pros and cons of what you either sacrifice, give up or not? And then are you okay with when you look in the mirror, do you feel good about yourself? You know, and I've definitely struggled with it. Um, My mom actually had some eating issues growing up. Uh Um, It's actually quite hard for me to talk about. I've never really spoken about it in public. Can we talk about it? But yeah, let's do it. I mean, this is a place to be real, right? Yeah. So um, I saw my mom go from being overweight Uh to being an anorexic to bouncing back again. And um, seeing what that did to her emotionally Mm -hmm. broke me. And I didn't realize it. Like growing up, I didn't realize the extent to what I was seeing. And I actually started seeing like, for instance, oh, she wants to lose weight. So she starves herself and has a piece of pita bread every day. Mm -hmm. Like that was it. Mm -hmm. So I grew up thinking if you want to lose weight, that's how you do it. You know, my mom did the same thing. Uh huh. She told me. Um, she said, I'm going to lose weight, so I'm going to eat one small bowl of rice a day. And I was like, that's not how you do it. And at this point, I've already been a fitness instructor and stuff, so I was really unhappy with Hmm. that. She did that, and she was going swimming every single day. And then you know what happened? She full-on collapsed at the pool, was brought to the hospital in the emergency room. Um, And then she, at that point, she had lost a lot of weight, and then she gained it all back. Hmm. Because that's not how you do it. But it's it's weird. It's, It's like our mom's grew up in a time where starving yourself meant getting skinnier, right. which clearly that is what happens, but that is not the right way to do things for sustainability. Yeah, and I think we're obviously very lucky now to have the internet mm-hmm. to be able to go on. The problem is there's so much misinformation out there. Mm-hmm. That it, I don't know if it necessarily helps, but you're right. Back then it was lower, less calories means you lose more weight. So yeah, growing up, that's what I literally saw. So I saw cool if I'm if someone said to me hey you're getting a little chubby as you go through because I was actually skinny so going through you know Uh the the age of 16 where you're getting more full Uh um someone's like oh you're getting chubby I thought oh okay well I just I won't have lunch then oh okay I won't have dinner right it was just a misconception and I really let that those comments affect me um but then growing up being in my 20s um I kind of just watched what I ate, but I never really worked Mm -hmm. out. And then it wasn't until we really started Quest. Yeah. So um, Tom, my husband, his business partners, they were all bodybuilders. Um, One of the guy's wives, she came from bodybuilding royalty. Mm -hmm. So her background was fitness. And so I kind of started getting into that world. And so I started working out, training. The more I did that, the more I loved the power of lifting weights, like the strength. I mean, purely emotional, just for me. And I started transforming myself from going from looking good for other people Mm -hmm. to then actually realizing what I personally can get out of it. So much yes to that. That is exactly what that should be about. Because working out might start with an obsession to look a certain way, Mm -hmm. but you gotta fall in love with the action of it. You should wake up in the morning and like cannot wait to go and do your workout because it makes you so happy and powerful, which is what you said. Yeah. And that's how it becomes a lifestyle that's sustainable because you do something that makes you feel good. That's what it's all about. Right. And that's it. And everyone, like a lot of people say like, oh, do you have a trainer or do you do classes? Uh And to be honest, I've tried all of that. I just don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy running outside in in the woods and smelling the air. Like, (laughs) I get it. I get it. I get it. People love hiking. They love seeing. I just don't. I love being on a treadmill. I love pressing that button as it goes up. I love seeing the speed go up. I love being able to sustain that for, you know, 10 seconds. I'm like, oh, God, I could do it for 20 seconds. I can run for 30. Like, I just, that's my joy. That feeling of getting better. Yeah. That's addicting. Yeah. I love that. And as adults, it's, you know, we don't take gymnastics classes or dance classes because as a kid, you're growing and always learning. And I love the fact that now we can do things for ourselves still where we're still learning and getting better, which is really what, like I said earlier, keeps us from being stagnant. And that's fun. Yeah. And then you're finding that 
clarity in the mind right you're yes. you're getting your mind stronger because you're you're putting like at least for me i put like these little tests like so I, one of my tests was I really want six pack abs. Okay. So I worked for hard for a year to get six pack abs. Uh-huh. Then it, now my goal is to do pull ups. I did my first pull up last week. Yes, and those so are hard. It was a bit pathetic. <laughs> it was like one of those like really awkward pull ups where hey, my legs whatever. are flailing. And, I love it. But in that, that like that's just a part of my personality where I set a goal and I'm going to work hard to get it. Um, so whatever that person's goal is, right? Whatever, yeah. Whether it's like, hey, I just want to go running and I don't want even want to think about the speed I go. But that makes your mind healthier. Yes. That's amazing. Yes, exactly, exactly. Or if you want to become a better dancer, then you take classes and you learn a routine. Right. Like I, anything that you do, like, Get something out of it. Don't yeah. drag your butt there and just do it because you're just going to hate it and regret it. And that is not what life is about. Right. Um, we got to find the things that make us happy. And we have to be happy with the things that we do. Right. Yeah. And that little thing, that little switch for me in my mind of instead of doing it because you wanted your body to look a certain way. Mm. Um, and that switch of like, wow, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I actually found that I... I have better body image, right? Like I yeah. actually, cause I look in the mirror and I say, well, I had a good workout today. Like I had fun instead of looking in the mirror and going, oh, uh-huh. my butt isn't big enough. Uh-huh. And you know, like it just had to switch in my mind. And at least for me, like body image, like that was so powerful to go do what is fun. Yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, do what is fun mm-hmm. for sure. Um, so getting a little bit raw here, yeah. is there still something that you see in yourself that you don't like when you look in the mirror? One hundred percent. I would honestly, I would say people are lying if they said they were one hundred percent satisfied with their entire thing. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to change it, uh-huh. right? Like I still don't like my nose. I still don't like really? my nose. Really? I'm sorry. I don't like my nose. Right? <laughs> I think it is a beautiful nose. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> um, but I still don't like it. But I'm okay with it. Uh-huh. Right? It's like I've absolutely considered plastic surgery. Uh-huh. And I'm not one of those people. I don't judge people. If you want a boob job, get a boob job. If you want a nose job. Like if it truly makes you feel better about yourself and gives you confidence to then be able to do things in life that you thought you could never do. Mm-hmm. Go for it. If it becomes an obsession and now it's unhealthy, I think that's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. So that's my little disclaimer there about plastic surgery. Okay, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, I was like, I really wanted to change my nose. And I was like, when I get old enough, I'm going to, you know, change my nose uh-huh. because I just get picked on all the time. Yeah. And it wasn't until... and. I don't know if this is good or bad, but it wasn't until I met my husband Mm -hmm. and he was like, I love your nose so much. There's no way you're going to change it. (laughs) And look, I get right. The other people's, um, I guess, opinion of you does have a reflection on you. But he he made me okay with it because he made me realize it's part of my character. Yeah. Right. And I never thought about it like that before. I always thought like it needs to be perfect. Right. And it wasn't until it was like, look, what? makes you amazing and unique is you have this weird nose (laughs) like it's it's in that that makes you you and so over time I actually became very okay with it and then I look back now at um oh what's that woman in um dirty dancing oh yeah Um, I know who you're talking about and she had a nose job uh oh she did she was famous Uh for her nose and then she she had had a a nose nose job? job and she barely made a movie after that so that is weird. It's because That's weird. now she, I, I mean, look, I'm again, I'm just guessing. Uh-huh. I think it's just because she became generic. Ah, oh, yeah. We all start looking like the same, same perfect robot. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like take um, Julia Roberts. Uh-huh. Nose, mouth, very distinct, uh-huh. very unique. That's what makes her her. And I didn't get it until I got older. And so if I could go back, right, like do you ever play the game? Like if you could be in a time machine Mm -hmm. and go back to your younger self, what Mm -hmm. would you do? Mm -hmm. That would be one thing I would tell myself. Like your nose makes you who you are. And so I still look and see that it's not perfect, but I'm I'm okay with that. I like that. I like that a lot. What about you? Me? Yeah. Um, to be honest. Yeah, let's let's be raw. Let's be honest. When I look in the mirror, the part that bothers me the most is my lower belly. And I feel like as I've gotten older, it's just starting to protrude a little bit more. Okay. Um, and I'm just trying to work on it. <laughs> so for you, it's I notice it, I really want to improve it, and now I'm working towards that. Yeah. And the really, really weird thing is that 
I have a very strong core. I mean, I've been doing Pilates since I was 16. Go, it's insane the stuff that you do. <laughs> but here's the thing. I don't look like I could. And that's kind of the the part that people who don't know me don't mm. get and who, who will say the things like, oh, you should lose weight if you care about your career. You're too fat to be an instructor. But the thing is, I have the strength within, but I also s- have this layer of fat on top. I just do. And um, actually, really interesting. For Have you ever taken a DNA test, like a no, 23andMe? Okay, no. so I took the test a year or so ago. So what you do is you spit in a vial Mm -hmm. and then you send it off to some scientists and they end up um, extracting the data and giving you results to a bunch of tests. Well, new test just came out and it told me whether I am predispositioned to be um, skinnier, average, or heavier than an average person of my height and weight. So... Have you got the results yet? I have the results. Do you want to roll? So... My whole life, I have struggled with my weight, and the test says that I am predispositioned to be 5% heavier than an average person my height and weight. So it is true. There is a reason why that I do have a little bit more fat on me than Mm -hmm. a person who would be eating the way I do Mm -hmm. and um, working out the way that I do. Now, uh, the other thing, though, with the test is I don't know what average means for right. them because based on their average number, I'm actually like 20 pounds less than the average. But mm. if uh, if I was supposed to be even five pounds more than that, I'd be like 30 pounds less than the average. So I'm doing good uh, in comparison to whatever this number means. But regardless, the fact that I am predispositioned to be 5% more um, tells me that that's just in my genetics. Like some people are going to be leaner doing less and some people are going to be bigger doing more. And I just happen to be on that end of the scale. And I also just happen to be a fitness instructor where my body is going to be criticized every day for everything that I do. So, you know, it is that what it is. But I do love my strength. Um, but I don't exactly love the amount of fat in my lower belly. But it's not like I can't work on that. Right. And I was about yeah. to say, right, because you've been in that fitness, you've yeah. competed, you know what it takes to, to get rid of it. But the fact that you're not willing to is so admirable. And I say that because... So many people will do whatever it takes, right? They will go to the point of fainting. They will go to the point of not being um, being able to function mentally. And I think, you know, for both of us, it's like we prioritize. And we know, like, uh, we've got a business to run. Yeah. And so nothing can affect the clarity of my mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if it takes you twice as long, three times as long, four times as long to get where you need to go, then so be it. Because I'm not willing to give up this other thing mm-hmm. that is more important than aesthetic. Exactly. Even someone who is such a massive YouTuber, right? You could go back to the competitive thing, mm-hmm. but you don't. And I think that's very important. Very important. Because young girls are looking at you, seeing what you do, and they're going to mimic you. Right. And so being a role model, God, like that must it must be very difficult. But I think you being honest is incredibly powerful for the people listening. I think that that as long as we are trying to get stronger and better every Mm -hmm. day, then you're doing the right thing. And if you're not hurting anyone and you're making yourself happy, then keep trying. I will not go back to what I did four years ago at that bikini competition because I was not myself. I look back then and I'm like, who is that girl who was so angry, Mm -hmm. uh, hated food? All I wanted to do was work out and all I cared about was my body. Like that was just so vain. So I'm going to try to get the best version of my body while I can still run my business, Mm -hmm. hang out with friends and do what I love because that's called balance. Like I said, I'm not a model, so I'm not going to invest all of my time and energy into simply getting a six pack of abs because that's apparently really hard for me, according to my results. (laughs) Yeah. um, At Quest, there was always fitness models around. Always. And so I, as you know, ran the media department and we would have to do photo shoots. Uh And in the photo shoots, um, I'd have to hire models. Okay. And that was hard. Why? Because... I had to be judgmental. Oh, yeah. Uh Like, that was Uh tough. Uh Because here I am, I have to do a photo shoot. 
They have to be a reflection of the company. The reflection of the company obviously is health. Yeah. It's strength. Yeah. Um, and so it was very hard to bring in people, young women, uh-huh. who desperately want to be hired, right? They're excited. Yeah. They want to be hired. Here I am, a, a woman who understands body image, not wanting to be ever negative to a woman. Yeah. Um, and here I am having to tell people no. Yeah. Oh, that was hard. Um, You know, interestingly enough, we uh, also do model casting. So I know exactly what you're talking about because we have to hire pop flex models for the clothing. And let me tell you, I made a mistake the very first time we hired our first professional models. Really? Why? Yeah. Um, So when we first started Body Pop, which is my first, first, first line, uh, which I learned a lot from, I was like, okay, this is really cool. We're launching. So I'm going to be like a real designer and hire like real models. So I happened to have a friend uh, who was on America's Next Top Model. And she was like, sure, I'll model for you. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so awesome. Tall, thin, beautiful, knew how to nail her poses. And I loved the shots. When we put up the first photo online, people were tearing her apart. Mm, And they were saying, this doesn't represent, um, you know, a woman of today. She's not relatable. She's too skinny, la, 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 which which is also its own form of body shaming. Mm -hmm. I have to say there is skinny shaming and fat shaming. There should just be no shaming, period. Um, So anyway. We learned that that did not that body did not represent our brand well. So we rebranded, started Pop Flex, and what I really wanted to show was a strong and talented woman. And now whatever that body ended up looking like was going to be the result of her skill. And because our first collection under Pop Flex was based on uh, ballerinas and peonies, I wanted to hire a professional ballerina. So we worked with a girl named Kylie Shea. She's amazing. But she was the epitome of grace and strength. Mm. And you know what? Because we were able to show skill with strength and the body was just a result of that, we didn't get any backlash because there was a reason behind it. And so now when we choose mm. our models, it always has to come with a story and a reason why she looks the way she does. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's in, a, th- that's a really intre- incredible insight. It's really important because had I not made that first, I guess, quote unquote, mistake with the top model, mm-hmm. I might have still, you know, been doing what the fashion industry does. You yeah. hire professional models yeah. who know how to pose and, you know, you put your clothes out there. Yeah. But it's so not about that these days. It's about being able to show what the brand is personality wise through the personality of the model too. She's mm. so much more than just a walking, posing hanger, right. which is sometimes what you see on New York Fashion Week and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I think, a big problem, right? Is um, now with social media, there's so much out there. There's so much um, models, so many, you know, it, God, I even, I, there's sites yeah. about anorexics on uh-huh. how to be an anorexic. And do you know that I have been on those sites have before. you really when i was really uh okay this might have been my teenage years yeah. when i was struggling with my weight i actually went on those uh anorexic bulimic sites to see what was going on to see what my options were i know this is so unhealthy and i've never talked but about here's the thing, it's important that you're talking yeah. about it um and i remember going through the forums and they'd be like if you're ever hungry just look up a photo of a dirty toilet like they, they had all these girls were sharing tips on how to avoid eating. Um, and I I actually did try throwing up one time. And I was like, this is really, it tastes terrible and I don't like it. So I was like, I can't handle that. I'm just going to do exercise and eat right instead. But mm-hmm. I, I have to be honest, I did look in that direction once before in my life. And I hope that everyone listening like actually hears what you're saying, right? It is so powerful what you're saying. I really hope listeners are really paying attention because you being vulnerable and saying exactly what you did, right? Look, this is not a lesson on how to, you know, go and be an anorexic. It's the reality of what you've been through in your life and how you've come out of it the other end. And it really breaks my heart. Like, it breaks my heart that these sites are out there, that Mm -hmm. these people are out there. Um... And it breaks my heart that they feel like that's where they have to turn to. Yeah, because they find a community of people that 
quote unquote get them. Yeah. But really all of them, it does break my heart too because you need to get healthy in your mind. It's just a, it's a total mental disorder. Yeah. Because you just don't feel like you're good enough that you would have to resort to this pain and torture to please yourself or is it pleasing yourself for other people? I think really? it's pleasing yourself it's, for other people. Exactly, but you think it's for yourself. 100%. And that's the problem. Because you think if you just do this one thing, I'm going to be happy. Oh, and right? that because is, other people yeah. will like me. And that is where the problem begins because it's never enough. Yeah. Well, all, if you're going to be like that and resort to those things, you're always going to find something wrong with you and it's just going to keep going and going until it gets to a really, really dangerous point. Mm-hmm. We just got to stop it before gets there and that's what we're hoping to do here on the podcast right is Mm -hmm. be real be authentic be honest Mm -hmm. talk about all the real issues that are actually happening out there and then what we did or like i'll get other suggestions like how do people come out of that Um, and how do we flip the switch on body image yeah, and I think and I'm so lucky that I get to talk to you about this I actually haven't told anyone that um Either ever or in a really long time. I can't. This even has been remember. like quite a this opening is podcast. Super for us, opening podcast. There are things I learned about you that I didn't know and things that I haven't ever said. And I think for those of you guys at home, um, really try to talk it out mm-hmm. because you really learn a lot about yourself. And maybe another girl out there is going through the same thing. Hundred percent. And then you can help each other. So. Like we always say, surround yourself with people who support you, mm-hmm. positive people, and people who inspire you. Yeah, and be your authentic self because mm-hmm. if someone can't handle that or doesn't want to hear it, then dis- distance yourself from them. Yep. Right. Do the best you can to do that. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. This was really therapeutic. Lisa. Yeah, <laughs> it really was. And look, this is one of those subjects that I think that we can talk about endlessly and we'll definitely do more um, oh, yeah. episodes on this. Um, I think we've just really now just touched the surface mm-hmm. of um, of body image and what that means to us. Um, we'd love to hear from people out there on, you know, experiences and how we can start changing um, the, the discussion that's going on about, you know, negative body image and let's flip it for sure thank you guys for joining us and until next time be Be heroic all right guys if today's episode has inspired you to be fearless and bring out your inner shiro please guys rate review subscribe it would mean the world to us shout it from the rooftops tell your friends tell your family tell your dogs and also follow us on be heroic pretty much everywhere on social media we love you so much thanks Bye. bye